the biggest word I had, I believe God is dealing with confusion right now. So how many of you are feeling better since we prayed for you? Anybody? Anybody? Praise God. Right on. Awesome. Awesome. We are. And uh, sometimes we, we relate everything to a spiritual thing when it's sometimes just a physical healing that we need. And um, we want to discern what God has when it's a sickness or anything like that. We want to discern it. And sometimes we have to deal with the physical part of our stress and our depression or whatever it may be. Amen? I want to walk into this place and people would ask, what is a miracle outflowing service? You ever wonder what a miracle outflowing service is? It's a miracle service. And people say, wow, you, you really can do miracles? <laughs> oh, yes. <Yeah. laughs> yes, we do. Um, but I want you to grab a hold of what the miracle outflowing service is um, today and next Wednesday and whenever we do those things. One thing, it's a place to believe for the impossible. A miracle service, what I see is when you come and there's something impossible in your life to, to get a hold of, you're coming to a miracle service and God's going to meet you in a miracle way for the impossible and make it possible for your life. Amen? So whatever that may be, it might not even be physical, it just might be finances, it might be family, it might be relationship, whatever it is. If it's impossible for you, then a miracle service is for you. Amen? So we've got to grab a hold of what a miracle service is. How many believe that our God is the impossible? He works the impossible. You know what? It takes great faith to walk into the impossible. It would take great faith to do that, and Jesus has called us to do that. Amen? Today we're walking into the sanctuary level glory. I don't know why I call it that, but that's what the Lord showed me, and that's what I'm doing. And it's a place of really walking into the place of saying, you know what? I don't know that person that well. I don't know that person that well. I don't agree with that person. I don't agree with that person. But I choose to enter into the same place they, they serve Jesus in. I choose to walk in that same place where Jesus heals. I choose to walk in the same place that we have in common. Amen? That's what the sanctuary anointing is, in my opinion today. It's a sanctuary anointing. It's a place where you choose to connect to the, to the tribes. You choose to connect to the sources. You choose to connect to the fullness of what God has for you. And then we go away. There, I have my heart. I was thinking a lot about judging and stuff like that because I think in a sanctuary you can't judge people. If you want the sanctuary anointing, you just can't judge people. You just can't. And uh, you might think I'm bragging and just think that and I'll repent later for you. Um, but <laughs> I don't think I'm bragging. But I think that I, I have a privilege. It's a privilege that I don't, get, I don't have to judge. It's a privilege. It is a privilege I don't have to judge. I look at all these ministries that get judged at, and I, I have a privilege that it doesn't even come in my head. If, somebody, if a minister sins and they repent, I, I love them again and I accept them again. I, it's such a privilege not to have to judge. Amen? If they're called of God, let them be called of God. Are they human? Yes. Let them make their mistakes and let them fix them and move on. Amen? Amen. Let them recover. Don't, don't deny their recovery. Don't deny the people's call. Don't deny what God has called us. And, and I looked at it and... And we look at our ministry, and our whole ministry is based on that. That people say, well, you shouldn't go talk to that guy. You shouldn't follow that guy. Get over it. In Jesus' name. <laughs> like, come on. Have you have not done mistakes before in your life? I'm talking to you on a video, too. Have you not? Like, I mean, we could look in everybody's life, and we could tear your life apart, couldn't we? Yeah, if you look at my message close enough, you'll find a lot of mistakes, just so you know. And you could tear apart them because you say, oh, he said that word wrong. And everybody's laughing about it. And now he has to correct it, and he's trying to say the right word, and he can't, and he gets his staff to help him say that word. So you, uh, you'll find mistakes. And the Lord gives me, it's such a great privilege. I, all my life that I've been a Christian, I have never, ever seen myself come against a minister. Yes, I don't agree with some things. Yes, I won't be involved in some things. But I will not come against what God has called. Yes, I come and move myself away from something I don't agree with or something that I can't hook up with. But I will not come against that man that God has called to bring salvation or healing to people. Amen? Amen. And so we, we all here have to choose to join together and get our own thinking out of the way and say, where are you, Jesus, in this? So that we can see the fullness of the sanctuary anointing. So we can come together and we can light those candles together and then we can become one together in Christ Jesus. Amen? That's why people, kind of, I don't know if people get mad at me at that or I say it often enough or what I do, but I always say that if you shake your head, it's a pocket moment. 
Like, if you think you have to shake your head and disagree, it's a pocket moment. I don't know if people like that because they say, I have a right to disagree. You do. Just do it under your breath. Shake your head in your mind. Think about shaking your head. Just don't do it. You can agree all you, disagree all you want, but you can also agree all you want. Amen? See, it's not about this guy being perfect. It's about Jesus being perfect. It's about his glory being perfect. It's about his anointing being perfect. It's about me just being obedient and you being obedient in Christ Jesus. That's what it's about. And that's what the sanctuary anointing is about. Do you want to see the fullness of his miracles? Do you want to see the fullness of his glory? We have to dust ourselves off and say, okay, that person's not perfect, but he's still a person that God has created. Amen? Yeah, he ticks me off a lot, but okay, I'm going to just remove myself from the tick-off moment, and I'm going to choose to get the blessing that God has. Amen? And uh, I, I saw that, and, and the Lord was just showing that to me and saying that if we want the true sanctuary anointing, we have to choose to join together as tribes. We have to choose to jo join together to see the greatness and the deepest level of miracles you can ever see. Amen? We have a southern Manitoba culture here. And, and we are pretty stuck in our ways, I'm telling you. And, and I'm telling you that if we went across the world somewhere and preached, we would be pretty, pretty revivalists right now. Everybody would be shouting and seeing healing right instantly. And I'm not saying that we're wrong. We just are in that culture. We're in that rut that we need to get out of. And let's become, and this little let go, let God ministry building, let's just kind of become foreign to Manitoba right now. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah? Let's become foreign to what's happening out there. Let's become foreign to the rules and the, and the religious laws out there. Let's become foreign to that and just come into this place and just have the new power and the anointing flow out of this place. Amen? <laughs> That's a good place to look at like all the covers. We're foreign to Minnesota and Manitoba. <laughs> you want to come to a different country, just come into this building. Amen? <laughs> We're going to see some new things happening in Christ Jesus. Amen? Matthew 7, 1 to 6. Just going to read it. It's from the Web Bible, not the, not the Internet, but the W-E-B, the Word English Bible. <laughs> I like the word Web Bible because we like the Web, don't we? Um, verse 1, it says, Do not judge so that you won't be judged. For, and I read this before. I, I just want to read one different verse here before I get going there. Are you guys with me? You know, I'm the kind of person that has a hard time not to share the Word to see the signs falling, so I, I like to see the Word, you know, Amen. And I want you to just say, wow, after I read this verse, okay? Because you heard it so many times, you just have to get a new revelation saying, wow. Here it goes. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Wow. Now say it backwards. Wow. Ah, woo. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey? See, when you come to the wow moment, there's no argument. You can look at it any way. It still says wow. Amen? And that's how Christ Jesus is. Just read it one more time. Let's really get excited about this verse. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Wow. Oh, that was not good. Come on. Wow. Ah, wow. wow. That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. If you really think about that verse and you read the context in it, it's just amazing scripture. And that amazing scripture, what God is doing. He says, verse 1, do not judge. Uh, Matthew 7 again. Do not judge so that you won't be judged. Now, the Lord doesn't say, that we can't look at somebody's track record. He doesn't say that we can say, okay, be careful with that person. He doesn't say that. He says, don't judge a person's heart. You can judge everything that's been done. You can look at everything that's been done, and you can, you can kind of say, okay, I'm not going that direction right now, but I'm not coming against the person themselves. Amen? So we go, how many know that when there's a sinful nature, you kind of stay out of that? that you you kind of you know that you should stay out of that, right? So I'm not talking about that kind of judging. I'm talking about the judging the heart, coming against people themselves, okay? I'm saying, let's join the people. I don't care. I do care a lot, but I don't care what you've done wrong in life right now. I'm glad you're here, and I'm going to join together with you. Amen? I can maybe see that, but uh, that's okay. I'm just going to remove all that and say, I'm going to join with you all right now in the presence of God because simply who you are in your heart. You wouldn't be here if your heart wasn't for Jesus. Right? doesn't matter what you've done wrong. You are here because you love Jesus. Amen? Amen? It is because of Jesus we can connect together and have the sanctuary anointing. Boy, that, I don't know if anybody ever said that before. <laughs> the sanctuary anointing. Maybe they have. But it feels good that it, maybe it came out of the first time out of this ministry. <laughs> yeah. Verse 2. For with whatever judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with whatever measure you measure, you will be measured to. It's sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. So if you judge, you will be judged in that measure. 
So the more you are critic about a minister or a person in Christ Jesus, the more critic you will receive. The more attacks you will receive. Do you want those attacks? No. You don't want to see those attacks because it's sowing and reaping. See, the thing is, critics are not accurate in my opinion. The Bible says, yes, we're supposed to say what is wrong, but he doesn't ever say that we're supposed to come against hatred. He said we're supposed to come against it with love. Love does never, ever accuse. Love does not break a person to pieces and make him a nobody. Love breaks the sin. Love removes the sin. It doesn't come against with hatred. Amen? You say, what does this have to do with mere glory? Do you want to see the next level next week? <laughs> okay, well, this is everything to do with that. Because if I can't join with you and you can't join me in faith, we're not going to see the miracles that we are expecting to see. We just won't. The Lord says that I will speak according to the people that are here. And if there are not many, I'm going to speak to these people so they can get ready for the yes. big. Amen? Yes. And he says, these people here are coming and seriously, so I'm going to repair, prepare them for the bigger, for the greater. Amen? Amen? And then you're going to be part of giving out the bigger next week. Amen? Yes. If you come back, that is. If not, you'll hopefully give from wherever you are. Hallelujah. Yeah. We don't hold it against people if they can't make it. <laughs> Praise God, we're not religious. Um, <laughs> He says, for whichever judgment you judge, you will be judged. And whatever uh, you are measured, you will be measured. And verse 3 says, why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, and you don't consider the beam in your own eye? Verse 4, or how will you tell your brother, let me remove the speck out of your eye, and you behold, you have a beam in your own eye? Hmm, there's a good revelation here. Just hold on a minute. Sorry, just crunching my nice candy there. Verse 5. And he says, you hypocrite. You're trying to pull something out of your eye and you haven't removed the beam out of your own eye. You hypocrite. You know what? Sometimes I think I'm a hypocrite. Because <laughs> I've done that before. I'm trying to come against somebody because I think they're wrong and I look at myself and say, boy, I could change that too. Amen? Amen? Amen. Look, come on, if it fits, just wear it. Come on. <laughs> he says, you hypocrite. First, remove the beam out of your eye, and then you can see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Don't give that which is holy to the dogs. He says, don't give up. Don't give something that you can't see. Don't give into something in a critical way. Don't give it to the dog. Don't let your anointing be a mulch. Don't your anointing be a ruin just because you can't see what you're doing. Amen? Because we're being critical because we have a beam in our eye. Just wait, I've got a revelation coming here. I'm just going to finish the verse so I can talk about it. <laughs> and and you need to throw the pearls before the pigs, lest they perhaps they trample them all under their feet and turn it and tear it into pieces. How many of you want your anointing to be teared in pieces? How many of you want your heart to be teared in pieces? You don't want that, do you? So the fact is, this is how you not judge and help somebody. The fact is, you remove this and you remove your own ideas, your own opinions out of your way. That's the beam, your opinions, your religious attitudes, your religious thoughts, your upbringing, what happened 10 years ago, what happened one year ago, and you still hanged on to that. That's a beam. Did you know that anything God is not moving in today becomes a beam in your eye, becomes in the way for you? And so we have to remove your opinion, your attitudes, and say, Lord, I just remove and I choose to see them the way you see. So if I look at this person and see him exactly the way God sees him, I can honestly help her remove the respect and love. And now it's not judging her, now I'm helping her move forward. Amen? And see, the thing is, how do you not judge? You remove the beam out of your eye. You remove your own opinion out of your eye. You remove your own ideas out of the way and let God ideas come in so you can actually help somebody rise up in Christ Jesus instead of putting them down in Christ Jesus. Amen? Do you want this? Yes. Do you want that kind of anointing? Yes. Yes. Do you want that kind of anointing? Yes. Yes. Just think about it. If we would all do this and just say, Lord, I put myself to the side. Yes, it ticks me off what he did. Yes, I don't agree with what he did. But I choose to take that all off his side. And it doesn't even have to be evil. You just have to remove your own thinking away. Remove what is blocking your view. Amen? Yes. Remove it. And then you'll finally see the person. Wow, that's a nice person. That is a good-looking person. All of a sudden you say, wow. And then you say, but there's something there. Can I, can I just take that out? Oh, I didn't see that there. And there. Oh, okay. And you didn't even have to judge a person. Amen? We actually heal people that way. We come into the ministry, and you come to let go of that garment, and you receive a miracle, you receive a word. That's why we have the safety protocol here. That's why we don't let just anybody prophesy here. We, we train our people. Why? It's because we don't want those beams to be in the way of people. That's why when you come in this place, we know that we remove those things out of the way and we train our people not to judge the people and we train our people just to help them for who they are. 
and we move forward that way. That's why we do what we do. People don't understand. Why can't I pray? Because you're not called under the authority here to do that. Absolutely. When you leave this building, pray. Like, go on crazy with that if you want to. Absolutely. But what we have created here is a place of safety. The place of safety. And so that when people come in here, they feel, wow, nobody's going to pick on me. Nobody's going to, I don't have to hide myself just in case they're going to try to prophesy to me. People say, what, how can, how can, I didn't know I was going here. So I don't know why I am. Just if you're watching here, if it's for you, take it. <laughs> but you know what? I go by the leading of the Holy Ghost. Amen? And the Lord, and we go to this place and we say, you know what? People say, what's wrong with prophesying? If I see from the Lord, I should say it. Did you know I have had so many experiences where people have called me and says, this person prophesied to me. It was so accurate, but it felt like he was condemning me. I had to fix those things so many times in this church, in this ministry. So many times. Yes, you are accurate, but if you don't do it under the authority or if you don't do it under the safety, if you don't do it under the love, it hurts people. People don't want you to see their garbage unless if you know they, they know you can help them, unless if they trust you. Would you agree? Yes. Would you agree? Yes. So stop trying to find garbage in people that is not your authority to find. Right. Don't find those specks in the people when that beam is in your way because if you think you have to prophesy in a place that is not necessary to prophesy in when, when it's not your authority, that is a beam in your way. That's pride. Boy, oh, that's going to hurt me. I'm sorry if I'm hurting anybody. I'm not trying to... That's, I don't even know who I'm talking to here. <laughs> Praise God. I'm just teaching you. Amen? Yeah. I'm talking about the speck in your eye. We've got to remove the beam. And the only way you can remove the beam is in the authority of Christ Jesus. If you have close friends here and you sit beside them, you pray together, go for it. Go for it. Get in your car and as you drive, get drunk as you go home, park on the side of the road and laugh. You're like, Do whatever. I'm not against it. We just bring safety. We bring the protocol. We bring the place of saying that so that people don't feel... I have been in many places where people feel condemned because they've been approached and been prophesied to and been appointed out something wrong in them. And here this person thought they were doing the holy thing. And possibly they were, but it was not received well. Today is a day. Do you want the sanctuary anointing? Yes. If you want the sanctuary anointing, we have to join together in Christ Jesus. And we have to walk it the way God has called us to walk. Absolutely. And this place is all about training, all about bringing up people into the glory of God and training them into their purpose. So if you stick around, you'll get trained and you'll get out there. You'll be successful in praying for the sick. You'll be successful in delivering people. You'll be successful in prophesying. You will be. But let's do it the right way. Amen. Amen. Let's do it in the presence of God. So the thing is, do you want to not judge people? Just take the beam. How many believe here? Just let's be honest with each other. How many have your own opinions sometimes? How you, how you know those opinions get in your way sometimes, eh? Yeah, those are the beams. <laughs> How many of you know that you've been taught one thing Christian-wise and the word-wise, and all of a sudden somebody says something differently, it kind of goes, beam, I'm not looking at you. You're wrong. Let's pull that out of you. <laughs> you ever been there? Yeah, I've been there. I watched some videos and I said, boy, I, I want to pick on you. <laughs> that just doesn't sound right. <laughs> and, so, and then I just remove myself and say, okay, I just disagree with him right now. I, yeah, every, the, he said everything good until that moment. <laughs> you know, you you've been there, and you you probably you heard me do that, and you kind of got that way, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> it just does that sometimes. But let's go look, go forth in this place. Are you guys with me still? There is more healing coming, but I believe I have to share these scriptures just simply because God wants to prepare a sanctuary anointing for you guys. Amen. How many want to join with me? You're all from you're not all from this church. I know that. How many want to join with us and see the glory of God fall down like never before? And see the miracle. Let's make it a norm in our life. A norm in life. Not a norm. The name norm, but norm in our life. <laughs> we don't want to all become Normans here. You know? But we want to become super natural in the natural. It's, we are designed to walk that way. We're designed to live that way. You know what? Right now, I'm prophesying right now. There are people that are Hindu. People that are Muslim. And I'm not coming against him. I love those people. But I know that people are turning to Jesus. People are seeking for more truth. And Jesus Christ is your way. And you want to see those miracles. You want to see the blessing of God. And you, you cry out to God every day as a, as a religion, as, as a place that you serve, whatever you do. And, and I bless you with that. But the fact is, Jesus is calling out today. Jesus is calling out today for your salvation. Jesus is calling out for your miracle today. Jesus is calling. There are some people that are so religious that don't even know what real Jesus is about no more. And as soon as real Jesus comes around, they come against it because it doesn't seem like Jesus. They don't know what the Holy Spirit looks like no more. 
They say salvation, that's all you need. Why would you want to follow miracles? I'm not following miracles. I'm following the one that does miracles. Yeah. <laughs> like if my Jesus is a miracle working God, then that's just the evidence of him. Amen? Amen? Yeah. That just should shed off of us eventually. Mm -hmm. Amen? Romans chapter 12, 19 to 21. Don't seek revenge yourselves, beloved, but give place to God's wrath. For it is written, revenge belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. How, like that is just a relief for me. Whenever I read this, I want to be so good to people because I want revenge. You know, I just want to love them so much because this next verse says, therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. If your enemy is hungry, give him the word of God. Give him the love of Jesus. Hungry, give him something to eat. Physically, even spiritually. Your enemy, give him your love. Act like Jesus would act. And all of a sudden they f get the hunger fed that they have, even if they're your enemy. And if they're thirsty, if they're waiting for the drink, if they're waiting for the Holy Ghost power, because every person out there is waiting for something, because otherwise there wouldn't be all these spiritual forces out there. They're all looking for the move of something holy or something supernatural, aren't they? So you might as well give them something to drink. Give them something to get drunk about. The Holy Ghost power, amen? And then he says, give him something to drink. Then he says, for doing so, you will heap coals of fire in his head. So you want to get even with somebody? <laughs> just start loving. <laughs> you want somebody to just go crazy? <laughs> just start bringing Jesus to them. Amen? Come on, we all like revenge, but let's do it the right way. Because Jesus says, I will revenge. It's my job to revenge. Amen? You know what the word coal in Greek is there? This is what it refers to when it talks about the coal. It talks about our impression of sanctifying to call upon. It favors you to, for your enemy, for the memory of them doing something wrong. So for them doing something wrong, which, will, which shall pain him as if the live coals were heaped on their head. It will pain them <laughs> as live coals on their head. Whew. This is why, why did they want this? Why does this word call? That they may be more ready to repent. Listen to that. And then the things that are the mental pain, the burning coals on their place of their heart, the fire, that's what the coals mean. So just think about this. Hey, start loving somebody here. I just gotta, and, 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 and all of a sudden this person just gets convicted. And this person is shaken and, and because they're religious, they think this might be the devil. <laughs> No, seriously, they think that way. I have heard it. This doesn't feel right. Of course not, because you're burning right now with coals on your head. If you are in a place and somebody starts loving on you, somebody starts feeding you the Word of God or feeding you natural food or drink, all of a sudden they start just loving you in spite of it, and they're loving their enemies. Guess what? You have the greatest revenge you could ever imagine. And guess what happens? That revenge that God takes is a revenge to salvation. He's giving them a warning ahead of time with his hot coals on his head, this conviction on their head, so that he will be saved from the ultimate coals, the hellfire. Amen? Just think about it. Just be good to those people. It, being a critic doesn't do nothing to a person. It actually just breaks them down, but loving them heaps coals on them. It brings a fire of change to them. It brings a defining to them. It brings a conviction to them. Amen? I had somebody come to me once, and, and then it says, uh, verse 21, I'll just read it before I say that. Don't be overcome, don't overcome by evil, but do overcome evil with good. So the only way you can overcome evil is with the opposite. You can't overcome evil with evil. You can't. It has to be good. You gotta do the good if you want to overcome. Amen? And so I had this one person once in my church, a couple, one of our services once, and he said, he came to me, and, and he, he was saying, a person was just telling me, and he was saying, um, I, I, I feel really off in here. I feel like there's something on me. I don't know if it's of God or if it's, I don't know if this service is of God or not. You know what that is? That's a coals of fire with conviction burning. <laughs> you have to understand that when you preach the word of God and when it ticks you off, I'm happy. Because it's convicting you. So if you are sitting back there and saying, man, I wish that guy would change the way he does things, I won't. I'm going to follow the Holy Ghost every time, and if it doesn't make sense to you, ask God about it. Talk to him a little bit. 
Don't, don't ask them, don't give God all these pointers. To ask him seriously. Amen. Sometimes we say, God, like, why do it? Does he do this? Because this and this and this. No. He says, God, I don't understand what that guy's done there and why I feel so ticked off. But Lord, change me where I need to be changed. And I do the same thing because I get ticked off too, right? Praise God that we can bring revenge and God will bring revenge to the people and he will revenge them into salvation. This is what the glory is about. This is what the sanctuary anointing is about, is joining together and doing the good of God and it will change people's lives. It will convict them to change. Amen? Yeah. Love does that. Love does that. Are you time for one more scripture? One more scripture? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 3. This is a little different. I, like When we do these miracle influencers, I have no idea what's going to happen. I just put scripture down and say, okay, God, if you're going to use them, you're going to use them. And uh, I haven't studied no Greek or nothing here yet. And I, I didn't make a message or anything. I spent all, the whole five minutes putting the verses down on paper. That's all I've done. And I said, God, here, use it. And he would. He told me what scriptures to put down, so he, he's going to use them, right? So he features chapter 3. And that's what our, our service, and when there's in the supernatural, we want to flow in the supernatural. And so when I'm getting these words, they are coming out as fresh as you can ever imagine right now. Because I haven't, I haven't pre-thought my message. <laughs> Amen? So you're receiving from God right now. You're receiving the prophetic word right now. Ephesians 3, verses 8 to 13. Ephesians chapter 3, 18, 8 to 13. To me, who I am less, this is Paul talking, I am less than the least of all the saints, is this grace given that I shall preach among the Gentiles an unsearchable riches of Christ. Isn't that amazing? Here Paul is, and he sees himself less than every Christian because of what he's done in life. And he says, but God has given me anointing. He's given me grace to preach an unsearchable wisdom of God to these people. Unsearchable riches of Christ. Amen? And then verse 9 says, and, and to, take all, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. So everybody say fellowship of the ministry, mystery. It's not like the mystery that we do. The power of God, the glory, the anointing that comes out is actually a place of fellowship. The, this presence of God is fellowship. We go into this mystery. It's a fellowship. It is a place that we should enjoy. And we get excited when we see the healing and the mystery happen. Amen? Yeah. And it goes to the fellowship of mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, so who created all things by Christ Jesus. To the intent... Intent that now to the principalities and powers of heavenly places might be known by the church and the manifold wisdom of God. Did you know that the enemy doesn't know nothing until we reveal something? It's, did you know that? Be quiet sometimes. You're revealing too much sometimes. Listen to it again, this verse 10 again. Listen carefully. To the intent that now the principalities and powers and the heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. Now, if we look at it a little deeper, it's not talking about the, just the devil. It's talking about angels, too. It means that we are the church. We are the children of God that reveal the presence of God. And we release the presence of God as people of God. And now the heavenlies open up because we release the presence of God. Now the angels come and minister to us. And I know some people don't like the word angels when we use it. It's all scriptural. We can all prove that later on if you need to. If I, have to, you know, I might have to do through email or through webcast or something. I don't know. But we'll get time to prove it sometime. But when the angels are released simply because the church have the wisdom to release the presence of God in this world, we are here for a great purpose. We're here to win the nations. We're here to win the country. We're here to win the people. We're here to join together and see the powers break loose. Amen? And the, the church will manifold the wisdom of God. Church reveals wisdom of God. So sometimes we are too mouthy. <laughs> Excuse my language, but I'm, I'm just saying it simply. And we say things and we curse ourselves and the enemy is taking that curse and he's using that power against us. Sometimes we just have to watch what we say. Then we, if we would start saying, no, you have no choice, and we would start speaking against the enemy, and we would start taking our authority, and he would have no choice but to take that power and get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yep. We have that ability together. Verse 11, according to the eternal purpose, which the purpose is Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 12, and whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. Why I desire you faint not, 
<laughs> at tribulations for you, which is your glory. Did you know that your tribulations are your glory? I hate, people hate that when I say that, I know. But I will explain myself a little bit. If you didn't have tribulations, if you didn't have pains, and you didn't have sorrows, God can show his glory. Why do we have tribulations? It's because we came to this earth, we were sent to this earth to win. We were sent to win a battle. We were sent to win Jesus Christ over to the world. Amen? And if we are trying to do that, if you are any Christian at all, knows that every time you move forward, you get a battle. Anybody? <laughs> all of a sudden, things come against you. Anybody? And when we get the victory over our tribulations, God's glory shows off. Amen? So it's not that it's because of what I've been through, I'm doing what I do. It's because of my past. It's because of everything I learned. And every trouble I've been through, every fight I've been through, is I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm become successful because of the, the success I had over my tribulations. I'm successful because I have victories over everything that God's given me in that place. Amen? You're successful because you're going to win today. You're going to be successful because you're going to be healed today. And when that enemy has no rule over your sickness no more, over your trial, or your trouble no more, you're going to have the glory of God all over you, which some people already have. Amen? Let me read for some healing.